Are you tired of boss fights like this? Today, I'm going to show you 8 creative boss fight ideas that you can add to your courses. Let's get started. The first idea uses boos in two very different ways. The first way that we're going to use it is by creating pillars of small boos that fly at you at regular intervals. We're also going to make a giant boo that moves towards your location every time you turn around. We can make these pillars by stacking boos on top of a muncher. This will make sure that the boos don't fly away and that we keep our vertical pillar the entire time. Then we take the muncher and we put it on top of a winged hard block. This is going to give our column of boos some mobility while still keeping them together. We then put that winged hard block on a track that we created in a circle. This lets us predict when the boos are going to fly at us and lets us get a sense of rhythm for when to dodge these spooky pillars. Now because the giant boo has a piranha plant on his head, we can use that to our advantage. First thing we have to do is lure him down by looking away from him at the right moments and utilize the indicators that are put into this boss fight. Once we successfully dodge while luring him down to this box, we can step on the semi-solid here and get some momentum to spin jump on top of that piranha plant. Once we get all the way up to the top right here, we can pick up a P-switch and bring it down back to the middle. Now we have to do it one more time but lure the ghost to the left side where the other box is made of tracks. And once we successfully spin jump again after activating the P-switch, we can safely sneak through the P-door and escape this dreadful boss. Because Mario Maker 2 lacks traditional bosses that we can use, sometimes we need to get a little bit more creative. In this idea, we attach fire piranha plants to bullet blasters that sit on top of a Lakitu's cloud. This causes the fire piranha plants to fly towards us on a horizontal plane wherever we run. We need to use a simple trick to get this to work because piranha plants don't attach to bullet blasters on their own. So, what we do instead is first attach piranha plants to blocks, and then place a bullet blaster in the exact same space as those blocks in the course editor. That way, when a P-switch is activated, the blocks are going to disappear, requiring the piranha plant to attach to the bullet blaster instead of falling down. If we make sure Luigi is required to activate a P-switch before we load the area, ferocious fire piranhas will now chase us. As we run away from the murderous monstrosity, we dodge many challenges and avoid fireballs. Once we get to this next area, we can access shells to try to defeat these evil creatures. Timing's not always easy as the bullet blasters move depending on your location. If Luigi manages to climb up the vine without getting burned or smashed, he can also use a POW block to help destroy the enemies. We include a clear condition to make sure that Luigi defeats all 8 fire piranha plants to get a satisfied feeling before exiting the course. Our next boss fight is all about the dry bone shell. When we enter the arena, we see a trapped but deadly Bowser Jr. shooting fireballs across right at us. We have to grab and jump inside of the dry bone shell while avoiding ground pounds from Bowser Jr. and dodging dangerous fireballs. Once inside the shell, we are able to swim across the lava without being damaged. So we head on over through the left side and jump up to where the on-off switch is. Now the way this works is we have to activate the on-off switch in order for Bowser Jr. to become vulnerable. Now we must carefully jump out of the dry bone shell, pick it up, and toss it at the exact right moment to hit Bowser Jr. and deal damage to him. After that, we have to hit the on-off switch once again while avoiding those fireballs in order to get back up to where we started and repeat that process two more times. Once we get through and hit him three times successfully, we are able to get the key and jump up to this key door on the left. In this idea, we create a time challenge that ramps up the difficulty as we survive. We utilize bullet blasters on conveyor belts stopped by hard blocks to make movable walls. 
To make this work, we put ignited bombs inside the bullet blasters that will eventually explode and destroy the hard blocks. This causes our bullet blasters to move inward toward the player, making the arena smaller and more deadly. While the walls are closing in, we have to dodge wigglers in the arena. Wigglers are perfect for this underwater idea because they can swim through ground blocks and bullet blasters while the player can't. For the first half of the fight, a small bullet blaster launches calm wigglers from the right. Once the on-off switch is triggered by a bomb, the bullet blaster is now blocked off by a two-state block, and the red blaster on the left can now shoot out small, angry wigglers to chase us. We also release a mushroom at this halfway mark to reward the player for making it through phase one. Once the bullet blasters reach the center, a bob bomb destroys a POW block that clears the giant muncher, blocking the pathway to freedom. We get to team up with Yoshi for this next idea, brought to you by Aristotle community member, Random Guy. In this arena, we enter by stepping on a P-switch that creates blocks for us to stand on. There are four P-switches that are above us that we need to continually activate as we progress through the fight, otherwise our two green friends go swimming in the sludge. On either side of our heroes, stacks of chain chomps are jumping around with a tall bullet blaster on top. This bullet blaster will eventually fire out a spiky shell as soon as Yoshi devours all of the chain chomps on that side. The shell destroys a piranha plant that is guarding Bowser, which then raises his defenses on that particular side with a regular bullet blaster. Once we destroy the piranha plant on both sides, an angry thwomp that's been waiting for his opportunity can finally crush smug Bowser. If we are quick enough to eat all of the chomps before the P-Switch's duration expires, we can defeat Bowser and get the key to move on to the next idea. King Pokey is seeking vengeance for being rejected from Mario Maker 2. Poor Luigi is stuck in the crossfire. This giant Pokey is made up of four stacked Goombrats with one flying spiny on top. This flying spiny is shooting projectiles at poor Luigi while he has to make his way around the arena. He must pick up shells and launch them across to damage the body of the Pokey. Once King Pokey is finally defeated, Luigi is rewarded with a key and he is able to exit safely out of the arena. Boom Boom has been boasting about his unbeatable burrow. Luigi decides to call his bluff and battles the bragging Boom Boom. When Luigi enters the arena, three moving vines appear to give him an opportunity to stay above the deadly spikes. To create this setup, we place vines in note blocks and put those note blocks on tracks. We then put a muncher directly above where each note block will start and have the munchers bounce to land on top of clouds to avoid them from continually hitting the note block. We also use a thwomp on a track to remove the safety block under the door, causing Luigi to have to use the vines in order to complete this challenge. After a few well-executed jump attacks, Luigi is able to safely get the key and exit the arena. A possessive porcupuffer appears out of nowhere and tries to make Luigi a tasty meal. While the pond floods, Luigi's only chance is to stay on top of the crates and avoid the pointy spikes and cheap, cheap cannons. If Luigi can manage to make it to the top, he is able to pick a fire flower and launch fireballs through a glass pipe to defeat the Porcupuffer Puffer once and for all. If you want to learn even more unique level ideas for your favorite course themes, click on the playlist on the screen right now. To make courses, improve your level design, and stay updated in Mario Maker 2, remember to subscribe and click the bell. I'm Aristotle, and thank you for watching.